We're facing enormous challenges. More than 700 million people still live in extreme poverty. More than a billion people still live without electricity. 400 million people lack access to health services. We have always been pushed along history to go to the toughest and toughest places. And now we want to do much more in the poorest countries and much more even in fragile states. And that's tough. That's very tough. I'm 21 years old, and I know more about death than about living. The drivers of extreme poverty in countries where it is going in the wrong direction, not down, but up. These drivers, time and again, are all the same. Conflicts, natural disasters, and failures of governments. The public sector obviously cannot provide enough financing to close all of those gaps and to fund countries' development priorities. We must create the conditions to crowd in the private sector. If we don't do a digital transformation that we're talking about, if our governments don't wake up to the fact that they need to fix this problem, of letting the environment get liberalized, private sector actually lead these initiatives to get it to happen, then we have a big problem. There's a lot of misperception out there. What really, you know, what really would happen if there was no trade whatsoever, the poorer segments of society would be the ones that will lose the most. We need to rebuild democracy. We need to ensure rule of law. You need to fight corruption, but also you need to ensure that all institutions are strengthened so people can have credibility that democratic democracy is the best way. We are shifting into a more citizen-centric approach. And the promises of technology are that not only is it inclusive, but it also bridges the digital divide between urban communities and rural communities. Locals know best how to give them help. Listening to the locals how their help should be applied is the most effective way to provide aid. A lot of what we're doing now uh, is about uh, facilitating uh, trade and, tra and, and trying to make sure that trade benefits reach everyone. What we are doing here today is to lay a foundation where we will unleash the imaginative and the latent energy of the African youth and we will change the dynamics of our beautiful continent.